On today's show, the Yankees offense looks awful in Boston and can't score, but hey, at least the starting pitching looked okay. They're currently free-falling, finished their road trip 2-7, and seven, but good news, they're still 10 games up on the Blue Jays thanks to the Jays dropping 2-3 of three to the Guardians. Bad news, the Yankees are about to play the Rays and Jays back-to-back, -back, so by this time next week, the lead in the division could be a lot smaller. Plus, are Derek Jeter and Alex Rodriguez becoming friends again? We'll talk about Jeter's appearance on the K-Rod cast last night and preview the aforementioned series against the Rays. So get ready because the Locked On Yankees is next. <laughs> You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, Yankees fans, although it's not a very happy Monday. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Stacey Gotsoulias, and I'm joined by my co-host, Abby Mastraco. We'd like to thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms, including Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, and Stitcher. And you can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. Also hit the like button and the bell so you're notified as soon as our videos go live. <sighs> <laughs> Stacy um, has a lot of rants for you yeah. today. Yeah. Lots of yeah. rants. Um, yeah. The Yankees are in a free fall. And Stacy, is. are you going to tell me um, you told me so? Are you going to say I told you so? Because you've been predicting this like all season. Even when things were going well, you were like, no, it's going to spiral. It's going to spiral. Like you just can't help yourself but to like, I, like, what is this? Is this just like a mental thing where you're like, you know, you're not going to get your expectations up too high so that you're not disappointed. Right. That's what it is. <laughs> That's how that works. <laughs> That's how it works. I've, I've been a pessimistic person basically since birth. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I remember I, I looked at my kindergarten report card and as an adult, because I found it in my mom's nightstand, she had all my old report cards and I was looking at it. And I, I had never seen it when I was a kid. And it described me to a T still as an adult, you know, Stacy's unsure of herself, you know, even when <laughs> she's right about something, she won't admit it or she won't, you know, she doesn't want to, you know, bother anyone with things. And I'm like, hmm, because I was like that in school. Like, even if I knew an answer, I wouldn't want to raise my hand because God forbid I was wrong. <laughs> I always like second guessed myself, even though, oh yeah, it was, it was bad. But I was like that at five and a five. Things haven't changed. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, 43 years ago. Um, yeah. This weekend was, uh, oh God, y you know, it was bad when the only game they won, the entire offense was made up of, of Isaiah Kiner Falefa. No offense to Isaiah Kiner Falefa, but yeah. <laughs> now the good thing, as I said in the open was the starting pitching looked fine. You know, it wasn't like the Red Sox killed them in any of the games this weekend. It, the offense just couldn't do anything. Could not do anything. And I don't know. As we said, when they were winning, they were finding ways to win. Different aspects of the team were picking up. You know, if a pitcher was having a rough outing, the offense would score. If the offense was having a rough time hitting, the pitching would keep them in until mm -hmm. the offense could do something but <laughs> that's not the case right now yeah and miracle of all miracles last night's game a red sox yankee game in fenway on espn was two hours and 15 minutes yeah that's got to be some sort of record I, because when the game ended i looked at the time and i was like <laughs> like wait a minute and i knew it was going fast as i was watching the K-Rod cast, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but yeah, it was, it, oh my God, they just look awful. Two and seven on this road trip. And it doesn't get easier. They don't have an off day. They go right into the race series tonight, which we'll be previewing in segment three. And uh, yeah, Glaber's slumping. I feel like the trade rumors may have bothered him a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, you know, here's what I've noticed. Since we just talked about how the Yankees were finding ways to win previously. 
and now they're finding ways to lose. <laughs> well, but yeah, they kind of are. But Brian, I mean, Brian Cashman talked about how at the trade deadline, he talked about how they're never really out of games, but now they're, and, and that's true for the most part, because some of these losses were tough, close losses. You look at that loss against um, Seattle last week, that marathon game, but when they lose, they're, like, there's a few losses where they're just getting thumped now. Yeah. And that was not happening earlier this season. They weren't getting like totally stomped on like they have been a couple times in the last few weeks. Right. For the most yeah. part, what Cashman said still rings true, but now you're right. They are just finding ways to lose. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's not a fun thing to watch mainly because it would be easier if they were like this all season but they went from one extreme to the other like they've gone from being a team that was on an unachievable 120 win pace to playing like one of the worst teams in the league for two weeks now and it's like what is happening here it's really really odd the um you know we talked about last year where they would do that where they'd rattle off a bunch of wins then lose a bunch of games and it feels like that feeling again. Um, you know, when I saw yesterday's lineup, before I, you know, before anyone knew that DJ LeMay, he was having a toe problem, I joked with my friend. I said, why does this feel like the third game of a series punt lineup, but Boone forgot that they lost the first game of the series? <laughs> like, it felt like that kind of a lineup. It was like, what is this? What is he doing? And then... We found out that DJ LeMay, he has been having toe issues for a while now. And seeing how well he's been hitting with the toe issue, it's uh, kind of amazing what DJ LeMay, he had been doing this season. It's his big toe. Uh, he wasn't hit by a pitch or anything. Um, you know, it just might be one of those weird things that happens to a baseball player when you dig your feet in and swing and do whatever you're doing. And uh, yeah, that's just not great. Now, what is good stanton rehab starts this yeah. week they need him badly i never realized how bad the lineup was until stanton was gone because at least with stanton in the lineup you know there's that big force in the middle like him and judge and but oh it's it's lacking <sighs> it's just um you know it doesn't have the same sort of like intimidating there's no like you know middle of the order intimidation factor right Right. And, you know, Judge can't do this by himself. And, you know, no. the Yankees have been playing like complete crap and Judge hasn't. You know, he was going on that really crazy homer streak while the team wasn't doing well. And um, he dropped off in the second two games of this series. Um, hopefully being home will help them a bit. But, yeah, it's just really strange how far they've dropped off again feels like they're challenging that whole, well, we started off so well, we could finish at 500, but they're not even 500 after the All-Star no, break now. they're not playing 500 baseball right now. Yeah, yeah. They're playing, um, oh, God, they're playing like, I'm trying to think of a really bad team. They're playing like the 1990 Yankees, basically. Like, we're going to see, it, it feels like we're going to see a no-hitter, but a loss, like the Andy Hawkins game, where he pitched a no hitter against the White Sox, and they still lost four nothing because his team just kept making errors behind him. Um, you know, if you're a younger fan who doesn't remember 1990, this is the feeling. These last couple of weeks, um, you know, because the '90 team, they weren't getting destroyed in every game, but they were just not fun to watch. So whenever people complain about some of the rebuild teams in the middle of the 2010s? No. <laughs> Nothing is as bad as 1990, but this stretch, it's close. It's, it's really not good. Close. No. It's not good. Um, in a moment, we're going to talk about more about this game, but also, or the series, but we're also going to talk about the K Rod cast because they had a special guest in studio. That was what made it a big deal. It wasn't like he was on a Zoom screen or something. Derek Jeter was sitting next to Alex Rodriguez during the K-Cast, and it was interesting to watch. And I'll tell you all about it in case you missed it. But first, as you gear up for fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business 
fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job and the purple hiring hashtag frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn every single week. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you for making Locked on Yankees your first listen every day. Subscribe now to Locked on Yankees on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you get notified when each episode premieres. I was so excited when they announced that Derek Jeter was going to be on the K-Rod cast, as they call it, because I knew it was going to be awkward. I knew it was going to be uncomfortable. I knew that Jeter would want to be anywhere else, but he put on his big boy pants, he sucked it up, and he was sitting there next to Alex Rodriguez, and it was just as awkward as and uncomfortable as you could imagine it to be, and it was fantastic. Wow, I'm bummed I missed it. I was catching up with a friend last night who's been on the, you know, wedding circuit mm. this summer. I have two more left. I was, uh, you know, it, I was talking with one of my editors this week and I was trying to give him my schedule and he's like, how many weddings have you had this summer? I was like, well, only one so far, but I did have two bachelorette parties. <laughs> and my friend that I saw last night, she's already been to, I think she said six weddings this summer and she has one more left. Oy. Yeah. So it was like, it, what, we're, what we're seeing right now is like, the 2020 weddings were all pushed to last year. So then nobody who got married last year could like get their venue or whatever. So now everything's like, it just feels like a tidal wave. Right. And I had it on, like we had it on in the background, but we were just kind of like catching up because we haven't seen each other in a long time. Um, so I did notice that like, you know, Jeter's body language wasn't um, horrible. Right. <laughs> he didn't look like he was having a good time. It was, oh man. I never realized how touchy feely A Rod was, and <laughs> I, hate that. I I felt I, hate that. I it's felt like, stop touch, don't touch other people like yeah, just don't. I I could understand why Jeter was so uncomfortable. Um, I yeah I don't like being touched either. I don't even like being touched by my family members when they like hug me or anything. I'm like Ugh. so it, it was just it was really funny. Um, now Jeter is really. <laughs> I like his sense of humor because his sense of humor is dry. So he was rattling off some funny one-liners and being obnoxious, which I love. And I kind of wish he was like that as a player. I understand why he wasn't. Um, and you could tell that Kay was kind of, he looked even, he even looked worried because of the dynamic between Jeter and A-Rod. Now they did admit that they meant they met for drinks like a month ago and really you know like did dinner and drinks and hung out and then a rod made a joke that he drank more than jeter um and jeter said he basically was like i think he kind of listened to his wife's advice in the in the series because he basically said um Gerald Williams passed away recently and Derek and Gerald had been close since he was a rookie. Gerald took him under his wing and they were very close friends until Gerald passed away. And he said that his death kind of made him realize that he shouldn't hold grudges and that you only live once and that, you know, you need to like move on from things. And I was like, interesting, but you could tell that he's just not that comfortable with A-Rod yet. But again, there was too much touching. A-Rod is very touchy feely. I don't know. He had two cups last night, and I don't know if one was filled with alcohol and the other one wasn't, but something was going on. There, there are just was... some people who were like that. Like, a few weeks ago, I was at a bar, and a guy put his hands on my shoulders to get past me, and I turned around, and I was like, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. And he's like, sorry, I'm, I, you know, I said, excuse me, I'm just trying to get around you. And I was like, you can get around me without putting your hands, like, directly on my shoulders. I was like, tap somebody on the shoulder. 
right, it's just right. that he's like so taken aback by the fact that I was like talking to him like this. I was like, you don't need to touch people like that. It's very uncomfortable when you don't know them. And he's like, I'm really sorry. Like I'm genuinely, he did seem like very apologetic and like he didn't understand what he was doing wrong. But like note to the people out there who think it's appropriate just to like touch people. It's not right. a rod. Stop touching of people. <laughs> I don't care if they're your friends or your co-hosts. Make sure that they like are okay with that. Right, right. He's touching his leg. He's touching his shoulder. I mean, it was really touchy feely. Um, my they mom were telling feels some... the need to touch my face all the time, and I hate Ugh. that. Mm -hmm. I, I, like I tell her all the time, I'm like, this is a violation of my personal space. You can hug me. You do not need to touch my face. And it's like the more that like I tell her no, the more she's like, oh, but like I have to. I just want to touch your stop touching my face, Patty. Yeah. Don't touch my face, Patty. <laughs> touch your own face. Right. Not mine. Oh no, no, no <laughs> to face touching. Oh, that would it's bad enough when people touch my hands. I get all I mean, like you were saying with your mom. I'm the same yeah. way. Um I'll demonstrate on YouTube if you're listening. I'm holding up a glasses case and I'm holding the very end of it. And I was handing my mom the TV remote one night and she, I don't know if she purposely did it, but I made sure, I mean, it was like I was holding it with my fingernails to make sure that it was on the very edge and she grabbed my hand and I was like, I just, I can't, no. So that I feel bad, but I, I just feel like my mom, my mom feels the need to violate my personal space because she feels like she has the right to do that because she gave birth to me or something. Right. I don't know. Um, and you know, A-Rod doesn't have the right to violate Jeter's personal space just because they were double play partners once. <laughs> right. And they had sleepovers, which they discussed. <laughs> um, and, yes. and, and Michael K joked about that. He's like, you know, was there popcorn and like pajamas? Like what was happening here? And I'd really love to see what A-Rod's pajamas. I feel like Jeter's probably just like a shorts and t-shirt guy, but A-Rod probably has like, like silk, you know, a matching silk that maybe with pinstripes on it. So A-Rod did tell a funny story. Um, he was still with Seattle. He was staying over at Jeter's apartment on the Upper East Side. And the Yankees didn't have to report to the stadium till noon. Uh, but the the Mariners, Lou Piniella was like, no, you guys got to get there at 10. So Jeter basically said to A-Rod, yeah, don't wake me up. <laughs> He's like, do what you need to do. <laughs> go out, go to the stadium, but don't wake me up. So A-Rod was joking about how when jeter first started out like there was well there was nothing in his refrigerator and jeter's like yeah it's still the same way there's nothing in my refrigerator he's like you know and a rod was looking for cereal to eat for breakfast and he found some lucky charms and he ended up putting orange juice in the lucky charms because there was no milk and that's how he ate his cereal and then he joked that he did really crappy that day because he had the lucky charms with orange juice At the, and i was um... like it's Lucky Charms. Just Charms. Just eat the marshmallows out of the box like everybody else does. Right. Like, you don't even need milk. Just eat the marshmallows straight out of the box like all the other kids do. Orange juice with Lucky Charms. That is like, a, that's just a sugar bomb. That's too much. Yeah. That's probably why he that's played like too much later that day. Yeah. Um, you know, there were some moments that weren't awkward and you could tell like, you know, Jeter was laughing along with A-Rod, but mostly it was uncomfortable and awkward. And um, like, especially, you know, Michael Kay did the whole, um, like, inside the actor's studio slash center stage quick thing. Like, you know, if you were in a foxhole, who would you want to be? Who was your best, you know, teammate? And neither one of them said each other. And it, it was just really, <laughs> it was like, oh, okay. Yeah, great. Um, and then Jeter threatened the producers because they were talking about the infamous SI shirtless shortstop mm -hmm. photo shoot. And Jeter said, if you put this up, I will never be on this show again. And then, and then like a minute and a half later, the producer put the picture up anyway. And he's like, all right, I hope you enjoyed this because I'm never coming back. It was just, it was really funny. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ended, it was funny. I was watching it until Tyone gave up the home run to Devers and I'm like, click. And I just shut, I couldn't watch the rest of the game. I was like, I can't do this to myself. I cannot. This weekend was too much for me. Um, but yeah, I, the, the K-Rod cast is weird and uncomfortable. Paul Simon was on, Bob Costas was on. I missed Roger Clemens. He was on, he came on after Jeter and, uh, well, look, like, this is just sort of what happens in TV. Like, I worked in TV, so I've been in the room where they are discussing how to replicate successful shows. You know, um, the debate 
Jamie Horowitz, who sort of invented debate TV. Fox Sports brought him over from ESPN um, to, you know, start their own debate programs. I don't know. I, look, I don't watch any of those hot take programs. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to like talk too negatively about them because I do have a lot of friends who work on those shows still and they are really great people and they're good at their jobs. But I just don't, the format to me is not necessarily like super legitimate. Um, I don't understand it. Uh, but, you know, replicating Manning casts, they kind of caught lightning in a bottle with that. And I knew that this is what they were going to do. They were going to try, networks were going to say, how can we make this work for baseball? How can we make this work with like, you know, even for football with two other players? And I, I knew this was going to happen the minute Manning cast became such a success. And I thought to myself, you can't, you can't right. replicate this one. You no. caught lightning in a bottle. You can't replicate this one. And sure enough, they, they went out and they tried to replicate it in baseball. And I just don't think it's, it's just not what they wanted it to be. It's not, and maybe, and look, maybe they didn't want it to be just like Manning cast, but I don't know, like, are the ratings good for that? I haven't actually seen the ratings. I, I think, I don't know. I've thought, I've thought about this a lot because maybe there's just better players out there who they could replicate it a little bit better with. Um, well, I feel like the thing that works with the Mannings is, one, they're brothers. Two, yeah. they're both really funny. <laughs> like, the they thing. really are. And they like ribbing and like, each other. And that's what hard. makes it work. It's hard in baseball and hockey because this both of those sports, like, don't know how to market personalities. Right. And a lot of the time you get into, like, the locker room, the clubhouse situation, and both of those sports – and the leaders in the clubhouse or like maybe not the leaders, but like team leadership front office doesn't want you to have a personality. They want like Lou Lamorello is a perfect example. You know, he doesn't want anyone to have a personality. You play for the name on the front of the jersey, not the name on the back of the jersey. And it's supposed to be this like, you know, big homogenous, just like team blob without any the, the playing style is supposed to be the personality of the team. And that like. I, I think that's an outdated mindset. And so what happens now is like when you're trying to look for, when you're trying to target guys um, who could be really good in the media, it we don't have a lot of personalities. We just don't have a lot of personalities because for so long, these sports have not really wanted the, them to have, per, the players to have personalities. We knew Peyton Manning was funny. He did SNL. Oh, he was funny yeah. on those on some of the commercials, you know? Like yeah. we knew Peyton Manning was already funny, but the NFL also lets you have a personality. So trying to like target guys for media jobs, it's going to be interesting over the next, like, let's say five, 10 years as some of these guys who are maybe like the last generation of players to not have, not be able to show their personalities on the field um, are retiring. Um, I, I'm curious to see if maybe when they do retire and they get into the booth, like, you know, you test a lot of these guys. It's not just like, they're not just pulling guys at random. They do screen tests. Sure. Um, a lot of the times they do, they work with broadcast coaches. I think ESPN used to run sort of a program for um, former athletes to be able to get into the media and learn sort of the ropes of like commentating during live broadcast because live TV is very difficult. But I'm curious to see if maybe we are going to start to see different personalities in the media. And look, A-Rod was always a polarizing name. He's a name that's going to get um, a lot of ratings. And I, I have a friend who worked with him at Fox sports who said he, you know, he did, he did put in a lot of work as a broadcaster. He didn't just go in there and he works with the researchers and he works with the producers. He's not just going in there and sort of talking out of nowhere. Yeah. Sometimes it seems like his baseball takes or, or, or commentary is a little bit unformed or like dated, but yeah. he is working to try and be, um, a good broadcaster and he's working with the researchers. Uh, so he's a name that like, yeah, it was an easy one to target, put him in the booth. People were going to watch. And I don't think he's done a bad job. I just think that maybe this, like this, the Manning cast can't be replicated, I guess. Right. Uh, we did find out one thing. Um, Michael K asked Derek Cheater about old timers day. And uh, he said, I'm too young. It's, it's funny to think of Derek Cheater being an old timer. <laughs> he said, I'm too young to be an old timer. And then he said that he vowed that he would never pick up a bat and a ball again. And that save for one time since he retired, he hasn't, and he doesn't want to do it again. So that might be your answer. He may show up because Kay also joked. He's like, you could be like Joe DiMaggio, just show up in a nice suit and you don't, you know, you don't have to play the game. And then A-Rod goes, well, you know, 
I was, I haven't even been invited yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was like, Peter can still come because they're not even playing an old timers game this year. And he said that too. He's like, hey, they didn't even play this year, right? And, no, and they didn't. So, like, no. Like, you know, maybe they, maybe, maybe that's, that's how you get Jeter is like, there's no more old timers day game. Right. It's just an old timers day. And right. that's how you get Jeter to come because it's right. no game. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> sorry to everybody who like wants the old timers game back and sorry to all the old timers who want to play again. Jeter doesn't want to play. So. Right. And that's the only way we'll get him back. The only so. way you get him. No more game. Um, in a moment, we'll preview the Yankees' Rays, which begins tonight. But first, BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. You can probably bet on if the Yankees are going to blow the division. Nah. Uh, Bet online <laughs> continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Bet Online, where the game starts. Now, it is amazing, as badly as they've been playing, the Jays just can't get it together. They lost two out of three to the Guardians this weekend, so the lead is still 10. But as I said, <laughs> They're playing the Rays for three and the Jays for three. So it's like, or no, wait, there's a four, right? Hold on. They are playing Tampa. Yeah, the the Jays for, it's three games against Tampa and then four against, four against the Jays. Yeah. And then so. um, two against the Mets, the other two Subway Series, the ones yeah. that are um, at Yankee Stadium. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I have friends who are Rays, uh, Jays fans, and they're so frustrated by the fact that the Blue Jays cannot capitalize on the fact that the Yankees have been free-falling this entire time. Because with the way the Yankees have been playing lately, if the Blue Jays just improved slightly, the lead would probably only be about six or seven right now, but the Jays just can't put it together. Um, the Rays are kind of picking things up, although they had a little bit of trouble against the Orioles, although not yesterday. They nearly had a perfect game. Uh Rasmussen, that his name? Rasmussen. Um, yeah. He, uh, I was like, oh, look at this. And then, of course, as soon as Bob Nightingale tweeted about, hey, you should put on the race, the race game. <laughs> and he gave up a hit on the first pitch of the inning. It's like, oh, Bob, come on, man. Uh, <laughs> the uh, back page on for the New York Post today yeah. says feeble empire. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, yeah. Get again, it. It's like a good evil thing. empire, but feeble. <laughs> get it? Yeah, it's that's so clever, New York. You Post. don't want to get it. <laughs> you don't want to. <laughs> no, no, I do. I get it. Um, wait, how do they not have a starter? How does how does Tampa not have a starter for tonight? Come on, guys, you're killing me. Hold on. Um, Garrett Cole's pitching tonight for the Yankees. Yay. Uh, let's see. Oh, Jalen Beeks is going to be. I, I think he's going to be opening for okay because on pinstripe alley it didn't have a starter there but okay that makes sense jalen beeks against garrett cole garrett cole has let's see his era is down to a 3.38 his record is nine and four that's in 23 starts he has an al leading 178 strikeouts in 138 and one third inning Inning, innings. It's Monday, people. I can't. Jalen Beeks is two and one with a 2.35 ERA in 29 games, six starts, because they're the Rays. Um, 46 innings, 55 strikeouts. And tonight's game, I believe, is just a regular. I think every game is a regular yes game. On Tuesday, Nestor Cortez against Jeffrey Springs. Also a 7.05 start. Cortez is 9-3 with a 2.67 ERA. He seems to have bounced back from that little bit of a rough stretch. Jeffrey Springs is 4-3 with a 2.56 ERA. Now, Cortez has 125 strikeouts in 118 innings, which you always want the strikeouts to be more than innings because that's a good sign that, you know, your pitcher is doing well. That's why Cole with his 178 in 138 innings is pretty good. Jeffrey Springs 
91 strikeouts in 84 and one third innings. And let's see, 23 games, 15 starts. So this might be another game where the starter for the Rays is only in for like two or three innings and the rest of the guys are um, coming in from the bullpen. Tyler Glass now was throwing because he had Tommy John last year with the Uh whole (laughs) um, sticky stuff thing and the debate and everything. And he seems to be making his way back which would be very big for the Rays. Um, It seems like a few teams are waiting on guys to come back, including the Yankees, uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) to help them down the stretch run. Yeah, and, uh, you know, having Tyler Glass now back in their rotation will really be a big help for the Rays. And then on Sunday, Sunday, what? On Wednesday, what did I think this is a weekend series? Domingo Herman against Corey Kluber. I'll say it. I can't say anything bad about Domingo Herman right now. Uh, His pitching has been perfectly, acceptably fine. He's doing better than anyone expected him to do. You know, everyone keeps citing the rough start against the Astros, but since then he's been pretty solid. He wasn't even that bad against the Mets either. So, you know, I don't cringe when I see him start, which is nice. I do cringe when Clay Holmes comes in now, which is a very uncomfortable feeling. I don't like that. (laughs) And I don't like it at all. But he's overworked. You know, he was thrust into this position. He was doing really well in the beginning of the year. Now I feel like it's getting to him a little bit. And I feel like um, they just need to take it easy with Clay Holmes just a bit. And, you know, Chapman's looking better. And maybe they need to have him close for a bit there. He knows what he's doing in that position. And, yeah, I think Clay Holmes just needs to take it easy. Maybe. Okay. Just a little bit. Um I know that some people were like, how dare they say he was like Mariano? No one. It's like, I know people get, it's hyperbole. Yeah. (laughs) No one's like, no one's like Mo. Oh, speaking of that, back to the K cast very quickly. K asked Jeter if he was mad that one voter left him off. Like, you know, so it wasn't unanimous. And he goes, only one person was unanimous. And the fact that only one guy didn't vote for me, he's like, how could I complain about that? Like, how could I be angry about that? And A-Rod's like, hey, at least you're getting into the Hall of Fame. I'm definitely not. And it was just, it was really like, just. Yeah. What was your favorite part of the K-Cast? I would just say how uncomfortable Derek Jeter looked. <laughs> I just thought it was so funny. Um, you know, maybe it's unfair for me to compare that to the Manning cast. It, it, there are two different things. Yeah. Maybe that's unfair on my part. I, just, I, mean, I do like the idea of guys casually watching the game yeah. and talking about things and stuff. Because I know they tried to do it on MLB Network, too. They had CC and, like, three other people do mm-hmm. games. And it was kind of cool. Like, more like a, well, because it's called the cast. Because it's like a podcast watching a game. Yeah. Um, you know, I do like that idea. I just feel like maybe i don't know i feel like a-rod and ortiz would be really good together because they play off off each other really well yeah and i think that would work so um they've both they've been good on the fox um on the mlb panel and like i feel like they've they've both been they are sort of the more like two of the more like gregarious personable like former um you know large figures in the game like um listen to me people that might actually be good. Ortiz. Okay. Oh, maybe it's unfair I, of me to compare it to the Manning cast, but I just think that, like I said, everyone's looking to like replicate. It, this is sort of like this is how TV works. This is how media works. It's a copycat, you know, industry. Right, and it's uh, not even I, just like sports media. It's also TV shows. Like how many yeah. hospital TV shows there are? How many procedural TV shows you know, news, there are? News shows. Yeah. yeah, that's just what happens. But. I don't know. Maybe it's unfair of me to compare it, but I, I do. I, I just wonder if maybe there's some better players out there. Maybe we've just been going to the A Rod well too much. Maybe, maybe. But I don't know. We'll see. Um, I did suggest Cameron Mabin for yes, and he's doing a very good job. You're welcome. Anyone who wants to hire me to come up with more people that you can put on TV, casting, <laughs> talent, director. <laughs> Who knew? I was such a talent scout. Just kidding. Anyway, 
Tomorrow, we'll talk about the game tonight, and we'll see what happens with the Yankees. Will they recover, or will they keep free-falling? We'll find out. So that's it for this episode of Locked on Yankees, which is part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Abby and I would like to remind you that you can listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, and Stitcher, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. Again, like and comment on YouTube as well. Click the bell so you know when our videos go up. And if you're looking for something else to listen to after you listen to us, listen to Locked On MLB. Make your second listen of the day the Locked On MLB podcast. Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and a unique perspective on every team, and he gives you the biggest stories from around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast, Locked on MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. One more thing, if you could be so kind, please rate this podcast and spread the word about this podcast to your fellow Yankee fans. We'd really appreciate it. So enjoy your Monday, and we'll talk to you all tomorrow.